Hello to all participants and welcome to week four, unit three. My name is Jorge Baltasar. I hope you remember me from the previous unit. In this third unit, we will focus on learning about the cross-functional features in SAP theory that will help to ensure adoption of the solution. So let's jump directly into the content. And what are these cross-functional features available in, in the SAP theory launchpad? There is six main cross-functional features we will explore in this session. The first one is the settings area. The second one is the default values. Third, notifications. Fourth, context-sensitive help, also known as user assistance. Fifth, views or variant management. And last, navigation. We will provide details for each of these features, but before we do, let's answer a fundamental question, which is, why would you need to consider the use of these cross-functional features in the SAP Fury Launchpad? Let's go back to one of the concepts shown in previous units, which is the definition of the layout for consumption. With this layout design, you get an idea of what apps, transactions, or content needs to be assigned to a user or user groups, and how this content is structured so users can get access to all the required features. However, this is not the full picture of the design. Cross functions are also a part of the foundation in the mock-up design. And these cross functions help end users fully consume the apps or any content that you want to provide and adjust this content when and where needed according to their specific requirements. So knowing cross functions are the foundation of mock-up design, you also need to be aware that, in general, the definition of layouts help you ensure the right content is assigned to the right user. However, the correct analysis and assignment of cross-functional features helps ensure adoption of the solution. So now that we understand the most compelling reason for using cross-functional features, we can start describing each one of them. So what could you find in the settings options in the SAP Fury Launchpad? So the settings options of the Fury Launchpad is located in the user menu of the same Fury Launchpad. And to get to the settings options, you need to click on the upper right corner of the Fury Launchpad, followed by clicking on the settings label. Once the settings area is displayed, you will find all the available settings for your user, like your user details in the user account options, like the theme and selection display on the Set theme settings in the theme and selection display in the appearance section, spaces and pages settings in the spaces and pages section, and in the user activity section, you will find an option to activate or deactivate the tracking of your activity and frequently used apps. Next, in the language and region section, you can set up your relevant language, date, time, and decimal format. This is very useful in systems where multiple languages and countries are supported. And next, in the default value section, depending on the content or apps that have been assigned to your user ID, you will find different fields for which you can define a default value. This helps you retrieve data in the apps in an easier way as filters are preset with the values defined in this section. So uh, next, what we will see is the notifications settings. And in this section, depending on which notification types you have received, you can choose to enable or disable certain notification types or mark certain types as high priority notifications. So they will be listed as top priority in your notifications area. And last, you will find the search settings, which uh, helps you reduce the scope of search connectors listed in the search bar of the SAP Fury Launchpad. So with that, let's now talk about the notifications area and what you can find in this section. So let's say you receive a notification. So first you get the notification. Then the notifications area is located on the upper right corner of the Fury Launchpad. And in this section, you will find all notifications from workflow processes, custom events, or situational handling. You can select to list them by date, type, or priority. And depending on the notification type, you will get additional options to approve or reject the element, dismiss, or navigate to the details uh, of this uh, notification, which can help you take a better decision on your workflow items. 
So uh, let's now jump into the details of context-sensitive help and find out what you get when you configure this feature in your SAP Fury Launchpad. So when the context-sensitive help or user assistance is configured in your system, you will be able to see a help icon on the upper right corner of the Fury Launchpad. You can launch this assistant by clicking on this icon, even in your Fury Launchpad homepage. And by doing this, you will find help content and even some quick tours which can help you find interactive tutorials on how to use the platform. So you can learn how to use the, the Fury Launchpad. And whenever you navigate to an app, any app in the system, and you have any doubts on how to use the app, or you need a better understanding on the information displayed in the app, you can use this search, these help options, and you'll find ta content targeted to help you understand how to use the app or what each field in the app relates to. What's important here is that there's a lot of content, there's a lot of descriptions, and there's the learning icon. Here, you will find even more links to tutorials and learning content for you to better understand how the business process works in SAP Fear. So that was one tutorial that was. Next, we see another example of a tutorial, which maybe has videos, has demos. And also important here is that we have the learning center. Here, you will find all available learning content for all standard SAP business processes. For this feature, it's important to know that there's a lot of content. And you also need to be aware that there's two delivery models. There's a free of charge model, which lists content from SAP Help Portal. And there's a paid option, which requires integration with another solution from SAP called SAP Enable Now. Through SAP Enable Now, you can include your own documents, videos, tutorials, and text explanations into the user assistance tool so you can make the learnings easier for your own uh, end users. With that, let's now talk about the views and what they are used for in the SAP Fury apps. So views in the SAP Fury apps or variant management allow you to customize the app in a way it allows you to easily consume the information you require. So for example, you can include your own specific filter selection values with predefined values so that when you launch the retrieval of information, it is easier. And you can also edit the table column fields, for example, by removing a field, adding a field, customizing it in a way that makes your life easier to retrieve only the information you require to understand the business process. This feature is available in all SAP Fiori apps and is very easy to use. And now it's, now it's time to talk about the available navigation options in SAP Fiori apps. So for this topic, it's important to first note that any object in the Fury Launchpad, which is displayed in the style of a link, meaning text in blue color, which is then underlined when the mouse pointer hovers over the text, is actually a link and behaves like a link. These links enable navigation and also show additional details of an object. Depending on the security roles and the apps assigned to your user, you will be able to see different links or navigation options which can help you navigate to analytical views or transactional apps as needed. And you can even customize the list of links according to your needs, which allows you to show additional visualizations or launch different reports only when needed. So this allows you to have and launch the content only when you need it instead of having all the content up front in the homepage of your free launch path. This way, by navigating into the links, by navigating into the options, you will trigger features, functions, transactions, reports as needed and when needed, which is the most important part. We have now reached the end of this session, so let's review what we learned. We are now aware that there are six main cross-functional features in the SAP Fiori Launchpad. And those features are user settings, default values, notifications, context-sensitive help, views, and navigation options. We also learned that the correct assignment and end user enablement on the use of cross-functional features helps ensure solution adoption, which is the ultimate goal of an SAP Fiori implementation. I hope you enjoyed the content of this session and push for the use of cross-functional features in your projects. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.